So if you're trying to decide if switching from base Terraform over to Terragrant is worth it, this video is for you. I'm a DevOps engineer. I've written thousands of lines of code across dozens of environments. And in this video, I'm going to walk through the absolute basics of Terragrant, how to get started with their live example, and then decision factors you should use to decide if it's worth switching to for your team. Okay, so to start us off, I'll have a link in the description. This is the Terragrant infrastructure live example by Terragrant. So I'm going to go ahead and run tree here, and you'll see this is the structure that we're working with. So we're going to have our nth common with an underscore that signifies that these are going to be global values. And that's going to have anything that is common values inside of this project for our MySQL and our web server cluster, which we'll be deploying here in a second. We then have non-prod and a prod folder. So this is signifying our accounts. So we have one account in this case for non-prod, one for prod. Inside of our non-prod account, we're going to have a QA and a stage environment. So we have two environments within one account. All of these resources for non-prod are going to be in US East 1, as signified here. Um, the account.hcl, we'll get into that. That just gives some details on the actual AWS account we're using. And then you'll see here, each of these is going to be using the MySQL and the web server cluster modules. And then under every single module we invoke, each one of them will have their own Terragrant HCL. So let's get into the code base now in VS Code. So here we are in the root HCL. This is the first file we're going to look at. And you already noticed and you'll already notice there's a few differences. And you'll already notice there's a, quite a few differences from traditional Terraform into this abstraction of Terragrunt. So here's our locals block. That's the same as it usually is. It defines local values. We have our account vars, our region vars, and this is basically just saying find these from within the directory structure. So it's going to read the config, find it in the parent folders. And so you'll see over here, we have our end, we have our region, we have our account. So these will be defined within our infrastructure. This root.hcl will be the root that is applied to all Terragrant HCL files. Moving down here, we have provider. Now you'll notice we are generating a provider. We're not setting it statically. So traditionally, you would set provider AWS um, region equals US East 1. And then if you had another, you could do alias region equals US West 1 and set that as your AWS West provider. This one, we are saying generate the provider.tf within each config that we're building. And so it'll create provider.tf, overwrite it if it exists. And then here's the block that we're doing. So it'll dynamically put our region in. So what this does is when we build, say, inside of QA, which is in US East 1, and the MySQL, it's going to create a new provider.tf using this US East 1 region. So that way, if we create a US West 1, it dynamically will be able to do that just off file structure alone. And then the account ID, again, we're going to pull that out of our account.hcl, which in this case will be dependent on non-prod. Moving down here, our remote state. So now, similar to the state that we set up within a backend block in Terraform, but we're going to dynamically create that as well. So here's our remote state. We're saying we're going to use an S3 backend. We define this config. And within this config, we're going to set our bucket, our key, and our region, and then the Dynamo table, just like an S3 backend. But now what you'll notice is we can dynamically create this bucket. So again, this is our root.hcl. So this needs to apply to all accounts. What we'll do, we're not going to set a bucket prefix. We're going to leave this as is. So we're going to create Terragrant YT demo TF state local account name, which that would be non prod and then prod. And then it'll do dash AWS region. Now this region is separate from the regions here in the structure. This is going to be our region for our S3 bucket. So that's what we set it to, which it's going to be US East one in this case. So if we ran this code, we would have two buckets, one in our non prod account and one in our prod account. And then as we move down here, you'll see this key. That's how we actually manage the state. So we're going to have, instead of one big state file, we're going to have a bunch of little state files. So the key will be our relative path, and then it'll be TF state. So this is actually going to dynamically map our state into what our file structure is. So when we build this out, it'll make more sense. But we're going to create an S3 bucket for non-prod, Inside of that, we're going to have US East, QA, and then we will have MySQL. And then under MySQL, there will be a TF state file. And then again, under web server cluster, there will be another TF state file. And then we'll move over. We'll have the stage. Same thing there. So we're going to have actually four state files in one S3 bucket here for our non-prod between 
the QA and the staging, two modules in each. And again, if that didn't make sense, it'll make more sense once we actually deploy this and you see the state file. And so continuing on our generate block. So this is going to generate that backend.tf. It'll be four in this case to point to each of those individually and overwrite it if it exists. I'm going to skip over the catalog and the inputs. Um, one quick thing on the inputs, I guess. This will automatically, because we're in the root.hcl, it will take these inputs and automatically put them into all of our um, Terra HCL files that we're using. Okay, so I'm going to close this up and now let's move over to the end common. So you'll see we're deploying again two modules here across three different two accounts and three different environments, two in our non-prod, one in prod. We're going to just do non-prod for this demo. And so we'll be deploying two instances of MySQL and two instances of web server cluster. Inside of MySQL, this is in N common. So these are all of the common environment values that we need. And we're going to have a locals block and an inputs block. Now, locals, it's going to stay the same. Um, we're going to read from our environment here, the HCL. So if I open this up, we will see we have an m.hcl. It's just going to give us the environment name for naming purposes. So read that. We're going to set the environment here um, and then the base source URL. This is just what Git module we're pointing to. So this is the Terragrant infrastructure modules example, and it's the MySQL module. Now the inputs, now the inputs, this is something new to Terragrant that again, they abstract for you. What we're looking at here, the inputs are the inputs to the module. So another way that you've seen this would be module MySQL. And then just like this, instead of having an inputs block, all of the inputs are passed into the module and the source would be here. So these are effectively the same. We are configuring the same thing here, but this inputs abstracts that from you. So you're not defining each module. We're just setting it here. And again, this is our environment values that are applied to all instances in every single environment. And so for example, if in this case, all of our instances are going to be the same size. They're going to be db.t2.micro. If our, say our prod needs to be different from our non-prod instances because we need to scale to a larger size, we would remove it from here inside of our common and then inside of our Terragrant HCL for the environment. So in this case, I'm going to go to US East 1 QA MySQL Terragrant.hcl. And then this doesn't have one right now because it's all common values. I could define inputs here and set up my instance size of here. So now that we're in here, let's talk about how this structure is built out. So we have, again, non-prod US. So this is going to dynamically deploy all of these resources in US East. If I want to deploy in US East 1 and US West 1, all I have to do is copy this directory and build a new one, and Terragrant handles it all. It'll build me an exact replica in the other region. Now, that being said, we then inside of our US East, we have two environments. So we have our account, our region, and then each environment, QA and stage. Under here, it is module. We are, de we are deploying two modules here, our MySQL module, which if I open this up, we're actually in it. We're going to have include root. So again, it's going to find in parent folders. So it'll just go all the way up until it finds this root.hcl to include all of these values. That's where we get our provider, our backend, etc. cetera. And then include end common. So it's going to go find this MySQL file from here for all of those include values. And then our Terraform. So this is where we define the source module we're actually pointing to. And this is really important. This is how you can make changes to modules within your repositories. So you have to be, so you should be using modules within a registry if you're using Terragrant. And I'll talk about that more towards the end of this video about that's one of the key decision makers. But in this case, say I'm updating my MySQL and I only want to push to QA and I just released version 9.0, I can go ahead and update that reference here. But inside of my staging, it'll stay here as 8.0. So that's how you would make changes. And then I can push them across environments whenever I'm ready. I'm going to revert that though. And then moving down here, we have our Terragrant HCL within our web server cluster. Basically the exact same setup, but we just change out what values we're referencing and the URL that we're pulling from is going to be the new uh, module. So now that's all the file structure. Let's go ahead and get into how to use Terragrant. So I alias Terragrant to TG. So I just type that in and it's like I type in Terragrant all the way. But Terragrant, again, is an abstraction on top of Terraform. 
So you need to have Terraform installed and then you need to have Terra Grunt. Um, you can look up guides to install them. If you're on Mac, you can just run brew install for each of those. But in this case, the first thing you're usually doing is Terraform in it, right? But we actually don't need to do that because Terragrunt handles it for us. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, let's do LS. I'm going to CD into my non-prod environment and let's CD all the way down. So we're going to go ahead and run inside of our MySQL. Now we're going to run TG plan and you'll see the bucket doesn't exist. Do you want to create it? So we're going to create this new bucket. I'll go ahead and hit yes. Okay. So there we go. You'll see it initialized. It asked for a password and then now our plan's good. It's going to create our uh, MySQL instance. But you're probably thinking now, that seems like a pain. You have to deploy every single one of these. So no, we can do something that is plan all, which would be all of them. So I'm going to CD back now. Right now I'm in my um, MySQL. I'm going to CD back here. Uh, let's see, LS, CD back one more. And now we are inside of our US East. Let's go one more. So here's our non-prod environment. So we're going to be looking at our account our US East one, which is QA stage, each of them having my SQL and web server. Now what I can do is, I'm, and I'm just going to run the apply, we'll see the plan first, and then I'll do the apply. So I'm going to do TG apply dash all, you can do the same here with plan dash all. And look at this. Now we see group one, which is four modules. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. So I'll type in Y to do yes. And now it'll start creating. So it should create four different modules for us two in each environment. While this is running, let's go look at that state backend that we created. So I open up my AWS here. You'll see there is a new S3 bucket that was just created. And that's the name that we gave it inside of here right now. It's empty, but we should start seeing this populated. But let's go back to our list tables in DynamoDB. There is our TF state table now, and this is where we're going to track our state. So um, Terraform handles this automatically. It'll handle creating all of this and using this. You don't really have to worry about this, but just know that it does exist. And that's how we lock our state. So we'll give it a few seconds to run. It'll build out our web servers and our database instance, and then we'll show you the S3 and then the resources created. Okay, so it looks like our apply just finished. Uh, we actually got an error. I guess the live example Terragrant has is actually out of sync with the newest provider. Um, it looks like it's error just on DB class, the type of the instance with the engine and the version. So some kind of dependency mismatch. I'm going to ignore it for now. I'll show you what's been created so far. So if we scroll up here, we'll see our stage web server cluster, our QA web server cluster. Both of these apply completed. And then continue scrolling up and we see our database instance. This one failed for QA and it failed for stage, both of these environments. And then there's a few other supporting resources up here. We'll just go into them. Most of it is just going to be in a couple different things. So coming back to AWS, I'm going to go ahead and open up my EC2 and we'll look at the web server section first. So now inside of EC2, we have four instances running and you'll see there are two for stage, two for QA. So this is what the web server cluster does. It creates two instances of EC2. Um, again, some other stuff like the load balancer, et cetera. But this is the main thing. So you'll see it just adds the suffix of the environment on top of it, creates both of them. And because we're in our non-prod account in this situation, it builds them both in here. So we wouldn't have our production here. That would be in a separate AWS account because that's how we configured the infrastructure to map. <coughs> so here's both of our resources. And then the other thing, there's no RDS, unfortunately, but let's go look at our state. So now if I refresh our state bucket, we will see this should match exactly our file structure in VS code. So here's non-prod US East one, and let's actually slide this so you can look over here. So we have non-prod US East one, QA and web server, or QA and stage, sorry. And then inside of QA, we have MySQL and web server cluster. But then in here, that's where our TF state is. So that's like I was saying, we now have multiple little TF state files. So this is good if you have a lot of resources and you don't want a massive TF state file. If you ever had anything like over 500 resources, you'll see Terraform. It will take like sometimes multiple minutes to just do a plan. So you want to keep your state files as small as you can and that way that they're isolated in that way. But here's our state file for the QA MySQL specifically. If I come back, web server cluster has its own. And then again, stage, each one will have its own there. And then lastly, if you want to destroy, we can just do TG destroy all and it'll ask us again, go ahead and hit yes. And now it's just like running Terraform destroy.
So as you saw, Terra Grunt has some great abstractions. It is built on top of Terraform, and there's a lot of really good things that they did well. If you followed this community though at all, or anything in the Terraform community, you've probably seen a kind of love-hate relationship. There are teams that swear by Terra Grunt. It's all they use. They build all their infrastructure. They set up things well. They know it well, and it does exactly what they need. But there's also a huge amount of hesitancy and people either moving away from it or hesitant to move towards it because it is just another layer of because it is just another layer of abstraction on top of our infrastructure. So how do you know if you should use it? One key thing that I like to point out is depending where your modules are. If you work in an enterprise right now that has built out pre-built modules, you already have your module registry set up and they're in a very stable state where things are slow moving because they're in a pretty good spot. You can do everything you need. You're not constantly pushing changes or developing new modules. Terra Grunt's a good choice. You, because of that abstraction of setting up the providers and the backend, it removes that copying of Terraform, which if you've worked in Terraform at a large company like that, You've probably seen it where it's like every single project, you just go copy, paste, copy, paste, and it's good because it's all explicit. But now if you have a problem you need to change, you have this huge dispersion of code that has to be changed. Whereas Terragrunt, you just tell it like, this is what I'm setting up and what I need to point to. Here's the values that go in, but go use these modules and use this configuration and we'll set up the provider. We'll set up the backend for you. So Terragrunt's really good for that. But if you're doing that local module development, it's a pain. It becomes really difficult to push change. You get so abstracted that it's like, where, where are all the places I need to make these changes to make it happen? Um, really, at that point, I would not recommend it for any small to mid-sized companies looking to use it. Now, that being said, if you are that large company and you're already using Terragrunt or you already have these modules completely built out, it can absolutely help to remove some of that dependency, allow teams to work easier, um, have kind of pre-templated infrastructure that teams can just put in pull requests to make their stuff and it it's pretty stable at that point so if that is you then it might be worth looking into so that helped you to understand what teragrunt is and when or why you should use it be sure to subscribe and otherwise thanks for watching